I think that scientists are really privileged in that we're employed essentially by society to look at really interesting problems and we owe the rest of the world something back and that's about finding solutions and communicating them powerfully back to government and back to people in communities and people whose livelihoods depend upon the good management of our environmental resources. The standard university uh, model is one scientist working on an issue surrounded by up to about 10 PhD students. What we're doing is bringing together groups of these scientists into tight units to address some of the really big issues and that's working. It's taken time but we're getting collective effort, we're thinking about solutions and we're starting to grow big ideas, big approaches to solving the world's very urgent environmental problems and Australia's and South Australia's urgent environmental problems. The exciting development is the recognition that um, science is very important in putting together limits to the amount of water that can be taken out of a river, but it needs to be an adaptive framework so as we find more and more knowledge and understand systems better we can change that. We have to recognise that there's a short-term tension and a long-term gain. Ultimately a successful industry lives in a successful community that depends upon a very well managed resource base. If you destroy your resource base and run it down, if you destroy a river, then ultimately you destroy the community and the industries that depend upon it. So in the long term there's no conflict. In the short term it can be an apparent conflict because people have got used to doing things that aren't sustainable. And the real challenge is to put together a framework which is always sustainable and can be adjusted and that's what we're talking about doing. If you can have continuous improvement in business, why can't you have it in environmental management? And we're hoping we're moving to that sort of a framework.